Hello there, this is Ajit Navalaka, your host and ever coach. And in this video, I am showing you a tool that can help your clients have greater self-awareness towards themselves. This tool is called the Johari window. So without further ado, let's get into understanding the Johari window and how to use that in our coaching sessions to be able to create more self-awareness. The Johari window is a self awareness, self-realization tool developed by this gentleman and this gentleman. This is a powerful self-realization tool that helps you understand yourself from perspective of your understanding of yourself and others' understanding of yourself. The Johari window is like a window. It has four panes. The size of these four panes change based on your understanding of different areas of your life. Now across these four panes, you will find areas which are known to you and unknown to you, and then area that is known to other people and unknown to other people. The reason why we use understanding of other people and not understanding of other people about ourselves is because it helps us realize more about ourselves. It helps us discover more about ourselves. Now let's take the first square, the first pane of the window. The first pane of the window is what you can say is you know and the world knows. This is also sometimes referred to as arena or the area that is our greatest scope of understanding. This is the area we want to expand as much as possible because this area is more and more realization of us leaning into knowing more about ourselves and also being able to be authentic so the world sees us in the exact same reflection as we see ourselves. Let me give you an example. If you have ever met me or if you'll ever meet me, in the first few minutes you'll realize I'm a rather introverted person. This is something that I know about myself and anybody that meets me knows about me in a fairly short period of time. If they would not realize it automatically, I would make it a point that I share it with them that I'm an introvert and it takes me a little while to getting warm up to the idea of a certain type of conversation. This is something that is a very congruent understanding of me knowing myself and the world knowing about me. This is the window, which is what we call the arena. This is I know and you know. All of us know and hence the greatest amount of awareness lies in this window. The second window is called the facade window. This is the window where I know this about myself, but you probably don't. This is the window that really establishes things that we are kind of hiding and not sharing. And because of that, making us less and less authentic. Our increased comfort of letting people know more and more about us from this facade window out into the world so they see us exactly as who we are, increases our awareness and also makes it a lot more authentic than we previously were. This is a slow ongoing process. You already know certain things about you that you haven't expressed so openly and comfortably outside in the world. Now, without sharing some deep dark secret, let me give you a funny example of that. Now, I know, which you may not know, is that I really, really love cooking. Like, I love cooking. I love to chop vegetables. I love to cook them. I like to cook different cuisines around them. I really enjoy the process of cooking. Now that is something that you may not know, but I definitely know. I'm kind of cheating here a little bit because most of my friends do know that I love cooking. But the point really that I'm trying to make is there are areas about our lives that we have openly shared, have communicated, have gotten comfortable with, and there are areas of our lives that we haven't. And those are the unknowns for the people outside of you. This is the facade. The third window on the top right corner is the window where you don't know that about yourself, but the world knows this about you. This is something that came out as a hard realization and usually does come out as a hard realization because we are so oblivious to it that we can see it. For example, a few years ago, I was somebody who would say certain mean things because I thought it was funny. I would land them as a joke. I would say things which may be hurtful to certain individuals, but because in my mind, they were just funny, I would say it and then crack out laughing. What I was told eventually by my now wife and then coach Nita was some of those times, those things were very, very hurtful. She brought it to my awareness that I should go out and ask these people that I'm cracking these jokes on if they were hurtful. And indeed, when I did reach out and ask those questions, to those friends, I realized how hurtful I had been. Now this was unintentional. I didn't know I was doing it. But as I was able to go out and ask these questions, as it was brought to my awareness 
from somebody on the outside, I then became a better person. I became more conscious and aware of what I was saying and how it landed for people. It is very important for us to understand how the world sees us so we can correct those nuances that may be hurtful to other people. Now lastly is the last window, which is I don't know and you don't know. This is the window where there's mostly the unknown parts of life that we haven't yet discovered, questions that we may not have thought about, challenges that we didn't know how we will respond to have ever happened. These are the things that will stay hidden until a situation arrives to answer this question. We're not going to talk much about this window because that's not as relevant in context of coaching. Now, this window is not necessarily explored until a challenge really arrives, until a discovery is really made about that particular area of life because of the situation that we are put into or an opportunity that arrives. This happened with me when I had an invitation to go scuba diving. I didn't know how to swim at the time and I was terribly scared of doing anything that had to do with the ocean. For obvious reason, I didn't want to die. But what had happened was this unique opportunity was associated with a friend who was willing to take the risk with me. We were about to go scuba diving together and there was trainers with us who confronted my fear and helped me get past that initial fear. The reason that I tell you this story is because what happened when I did scuba dive was that I fell in love with the beauty of the ocean. I absolutely think everybody should take the opportunity if they get to take a scuba dive below the ocean and just see the beauty that resides there. That was something that was unknown to me. I always thought I didn't like the ocean, I didn't like the sea, I didn't like the marine life. But once I did take that session, once I did explore scuba diving, I realized I love that about nature, that I love the marine life. Now you saw there are four panes in this window. The things that I know you know, things that I know but you don't know, things that you know I don't know, and things that both of us don't know. Some of the exercises this is vitally useful to be able to create more self-awareness using the Johari window is step one is to explain the Johari window and the value of the Johari window. This can be done by simply giving a presentation about the four pains and then expressing how increasing the first pain actually helps the person realize more and more of their potential. If you know more about you and so does everybody else around you, it creates more acceptance, more love, more drive towards the same vision, and of course, more knowing towards what are our strengths and our weaknesses and things that we love and things that we don't. So greater self-awareness helps us live a more powerful, passionate life. So how do we increase the first window? The questions are hidden in the other panes. The first thing that we want to do is we want to discover what do we know about ourselves that we fear or are scared to share with the outside world. This would be a question for you or your clients to really ask ourselves. Take a piece of paper and write down what are some of the things that you know about you that you are unwilling or scared to share. This question itself allows us to get into a frame of mind to not just look at what is it that I have already shared with the world, but to search within and find out some of our beliefs, our stories, our hidden fears that we may not have communicated. It may also invite us to find some of the beautiful things that we do that we haven't had the chance to share. For example, like I mentioned, I love cooking. And for the longest time, people didn't know that was my personal passion and I loved doing it until I married a person that loves hosting and we got to host so many people and had the opportunity of sharing my cooking with so many of our friends, which have also come to fall in love with it. But for me to discover that, I had to ask myself the difficult and the easy questions. So the question that you wanna ask yourself is, what are the events that you are fearful or uncomfortable sharing? What are some of the strengths that you are fearful or uncomfortable sharing? What are some of the weaknesses in your life or, or stories around or beliefs around certain things in your life that you're uncomfortable sharing? And then once you identify those discomforts and those fears, write down why do you feel fear and discomfort around it? Is there a reason or a perception or an understanding of the world that you have that has limited you to be able to express yourself fully and not contain certain areas of your life? This will enable you to at least have the awareness towards what is it that you're hiding from the world. 
Now it will be up to you if you are willing to share with the world. The second area that we'll work on is where the world knows, but you don't know. This is a critical exercise. I really advise that you do this. One of the key things that you can do to discover what the world knows about you, but you don't, is to create a simple letter, a five line email, which simply requests people that are close to you to answer a specific question. You can start with finding your strengths that you may not be aware of, but your friends, your colleagues, your, your family members are very aware of. This could be done through a simple message. The message may read something like, hi there, I was doing a quick research on understanding myself better. It would be greatly helpful to me if you could help me identify if there was something that you think clearly is outstanding about me. Something that you think I have utilized around you, something that you feel is a great strength of mine. It would mean the world to me if you could write one to three key qualities that you think I have that I may not be aware of myself. Thank you so much for writing in. This simple email will get you most of the people responding with some of the strengths that you may be aware of, but you will find strengths that you were not aware of. For example, I thought my unique strength was my ability to market things. What I found when I sent this message to a lot of my colleagues is that I realized they saw my greatest strength is my ability to lead. My ability to have a conversation that was beyond the scope of the dialogue that anybody else was having. They thought I was visionary and leadership oriented. This was a unique perspective to me about myself. I couldn't see it that I actually was able to do these things. For that matter, what I found with this email, in a work setting, marketing was my third best quality, not my first quality, which was very interesting for me to discover. I also wanted to know my strengths, but I also wanted to know some things that I might be doing that are hurtful or not right, or something that I am unconscious of, which is why I created safe space with some of my colleagues that I really, really trusted sat down with them and asked them to give me a very open and honest feedback. I asked them very specifically to forget about all my strengths and only point to my weaknesses. I shared that this exercise would help me really become a better human being and this was important to me. These were really uncomfortable conversations. It really was painful to hear certain things that I was doing, but at the same point of time, because of the generosity of the people that I was sitting with, I became a better human being. It is very important for us to go out and reach out in the world and ask this question. Ask people if we have heard them, consciously or unconsciously. Ask them if there are certain things that they would love for us to tone down a little, not because of any other reason, but because it's not the truest reflection of us. Ask them to be able to give us an honest and open feedback and remember to not take it personally. We are all on an ongoing journey to become better human beings and this could be one of the greatest exercises that we can do to become a better individual. Now you can do this exercise for yourself and you can suggest this exercise to your clients when they go out in the world and ask these hard but important questions to their peers, their family members, their loved ones, they will find themselves to become more and more aware of how they're showing up in the world and how they can better show up in the world in more congruence with who they truly are. Now let's talk about that last pain, unknown to you and unknown to me. You don't know and I don't know. This is where unique experiences and unique situations come in handy. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Life is a box of chocolates and you don't know what chocolate's gonna be next. What you need to be open to is to be open to that surprise. And because you're open to the surprise, you will have a chance to discover more of you. It is important for us to schedule and plan for experiences we have never had before, things we have never done before, because when we do, we will find more of ourselves. There was a point in life where I decided I don't want to have a bucket list. The reason why was not because bucket lists are not important, but because I said, if something makes to my bucket list, I must schedule it. I scheduled each of the experiences that I wanted in life and went on to experience them. Because of that, I found that I love marine life. Because of that, I found that I am scared of heights. Because of that, I found that if you plan well, jumping off a plane won't kill you. Because of that, I found have, becoming a father is one of the most beautiful experiences of life. Because of that, I found that you can marry the same woman nine times and still find more ways to propose her to marry you. 
Thank you for posting your questions below. If you love this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If there's a friend of yours, a colleague of yours that can use this information, this knowledge and can use that in their own practice or in their life, go ahead and share this video with them. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. We release videos like this every single week. We are here to help you be a better version of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.